Welcome to Haxby Shed. I've bought myself an inverter. I already have two industrial inverters for two of my machines, my lathe and my shaper. And actually they're quite expensive to buy. I pay full price for one, the other I got second hand on eBay, but even that was about £70. I need another inverter, one for a motor project that I've just started, and the other one is for my welding rotator. So I bought this one. 60 pounds, one horsepower, three quarters of a kilowatt, eBay. It's a little bit rough, but I've seen lots of these around. People are generally happy with them, so I decided to go for this. I literally tried to find the cheapest one I could for the capacity that I needed. So we'll wire it up, we'll have a look at this. I'll go a little bit through the instructions that come with it and we'll try it on one of the machines. I've just powered it on to make sure it actually works. So you can perhaps see there 65 frequency, that's 65 hertz, and which can be adjusted by this knob here. Now you can set that range through a, a series of parameters which are described in the instructions. Uh, you might be able to see these lights on stop and forward. You can see the panel here with the fairly obvious buttons on it, run, stop, forward, reverse and so on. The connections for the power in and for the motor are, are down here underneath. And this green strip of terminal connections is very important. So the connections here allow you to remote this knob for the speed, remote the run and stop, forward, backwards. But there's also some connections which allow you to store profiles in here. So you store the profiles by pressing these buttons in sequence, but you access the profiles by grounding various of these connections here. I'll explain later. But what that means is that you could use this with a number of motors and you could simply have a knob which changed to settings to the different profiles for the different motors. So it means, I think it means, that you can use one inverter for multiple motors, whereas normally you'd use one inverter for a single motor, one, per, one for one. This is the manual covering four models, AT1 through AT4, and I've got AT1, single phase to three phase. And here are the connections. Well, these connections are for AT1 and AT4. Earth live and neutral single phase inputs and then the three connections to the motor. Then we move on to the terminals on that green connector block. Now what I'm going to describe here is the default configuration for those terminals. Actually X1 through X6 and I think SP1 are multifunction terminals and the, and the actual function of those can be controlled through the parameters. Anyway, we've got a 15 volt stroke 24 volt output. By default, X6 through X4 control the direction of rotation if we're controlling it remotely and not on the front panel. And then at X3 through X1 control the stored profiles, which profile is in operation. We've got common, and then we've got VL1 and CI, and those are connected to a remote pot if we want to do remote control of the speed. SP1 is open collector output, which could be used to drive a relay. We've got another output voltage, 5 volts and 10 volts this time. And then we have some connections listed here um, for a relay, but actually the relay is not fitted. That's optional. Now, if X3 through X1 are configured to select the stored profile, this table shows how that's done. So, zero means grounded. So if I grounded X2, we would have stored profile 2. You can see a mistake here. Section speed 7 must be not, 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 not 111. Now let's look at some of the operating parameters. I must warn you that the parameters are quite complicated and it's not helped by the wording. 
But the first one I want to pick out is this maximum operating, which actually is setting the top of the frequency range controlled by the knob, 65 hertz in this case. There's a couple of parameters here which control whether or not you're operating the inverter and the motor through the front panel or whether that's done remotely. There's some parameters here to do with braking and whether or not the electronic braking function within the inverter is operational. And here we have a number of um, parameters for the profiles. So working frequency is, believe it or not, the first profile through to seven, which is the eighth profile. And here we're setting the speed of operation. And then we have for each of those profiles, the setting for the rising velocity and the descent velocity, which means how fast it speeds up and slows down the motor. And then here, this is all about the terminals X1 through X6, where I describe the default function of each of those terminals. But actually, any of these functions, not through 20, can be set for any of those terminals X1 through X6. So multifunction input 6 is X6. Then we've got display options here. So as we were looking at that inverter, um, the display was showing the set frequency. But there are other settings that you can have to show different functions on the display. There's torque compensation settings. These are difficult to understand because there's no explanation of how they work. This is a useful section here about the current overload. So you can have an overload value for each of the eight different profiles. And they're all set here by default to three amps. And there's 127 parameters listed, although you can't set 127. So it goes from 98 to 127, as you can see. So we're going to have to set up the motor and inverter and try some of these settings and make sure I understand really how they do work. I've connected the inverter up to a motor and you can see that the connections are quite simple. Earth, live, neutral and then the three phases for the motor. And then just an earth loop between the two. I'll connect this braid up later when it's all wired up properly. And you can see this flying lead here. That's just common. Earth, ground. So it's not doing any harm. Then if I turn it on you can see it's set for frequency 62.4 hertz. Now here, standard mains is 50 hertz. So the motor's going to run just a little bit faster than standard mains. Then I can vary the speed with this knob. Through parameter 7, I've set the minimum frequency at 10 Hz. Through parameter 6, the maximum frequency is 100 Hz, so that's double speed for that motor. Now, P21 allows you to set the motor RPM for 50 Hz. And then if you change P62 from 0 to 2, this display will show RPM rather than frequency. Let's run it up to 100 Hz, and I'll record that in stereo. Let's change P62 to 2, so that we can actually see the RPM display. So, program, 1, 2, move across, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, function, 
one two function it's saved program gets you back to the main display but it now says R for RPM so if I run it 278 RPM and if I run to top speed that's twice line speed 100 Hertz twenty seven eighty RPM I want to try out one of those stored profiles and here are the pins X1, X2, X3 if I ground X2 we should see the speed jump to 40 Hertz I've made this back into Hertz so let's run it 10 Hertz at the moment 40 Hertz 10 Hertz the only thing is when I use one of these profiles like that this dial no longer works unfortunately if you want to rig up an emergency stop you need to set P11 to 2 so that it takes its input from an external port and then you have to decide which of the external multifunction ports X1 to X6 you want to use for that function now here you can see a setting number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4 and so on number 1 wire control stop number 2 keying stop, number 3 keying operation number 4 stop keying well it's difficult to know what all that means from those descriptions but from what I can understand looking on the internet it's the difference between latched and momentary I've set up the inverter to work with the welding rotator because actually that's the other motor I want to drive I've set the overload current to half an amp the motor plate says 0.42 I've set the frequency range from 2.5 Hz up to 50 Hz. I've altered the display to show RPM and I've entered in the 50 Hz speed of the output of the gearbox. So as I start this it should show 18 RPM. And as I turn it down it should show 1 RPM as a minimum except my chuck's not turning well at this point I've hit a problem then because this runs happily at 18 RPM as you can probably see on the display but as I reduce it down to say 5 it'll run at 5 anything below 5 it just stops there look at that now, on the other inverter I have, which I'll show you in a moment, I have a torque boost setting, which gives it more torque at low revs. Now, there are torque settings on this inverter, for this inverter, but there's no explanation of what they do. It's not as simple as selecting torque boost, like it is with the other one. So that's a problem, because I bought this inverter to drive this, this is the inverter that I normally use to drive my shaper. It's an IMO Jaguar Cub and it's much more of an industrial professional inverter. But I've been using it to drive my welding rotator and with this inverter I can reduce it down to 2 Hz which is a little under 1 RPM on my welding rotator without any trouble whatsoever. So to get any further with this I'm going to have to figure out how those torque boost settings work I think. P72 is called the torque compensation amount which can be 0 to 100 so I've arbitrarily set it to 50 to see if that makes any difference well it does look 3 rpm yeah it's got us down to 3 but it can't get us to 1 does it matter if I make that 100 
Let's make it a hundred and see what happens. That's three RPM. Two RPM, but it's nowhere near as smooth as when it's driven with the other inverter. And it won't get to one. Two is its limit. So that's what the difference between an inverter that costs like 250 quid and one that costs 60. It would seem anyway. Hmm. What I might have to do is to swap those inverters over. Bit of a shame, but use this one to drive the shaper. I've connected up to my Jaguar IMO inverter. I just want to make sure that there isn't a problem with the rotator that's causing this. So, you probably can't read that display, it says 50 hertz, and the lowest I could get, even with full torque boost on that new inverter, was 2 RPM. So let's give this a go. Hopefully you can see down the bottom of the screen there, the uh, chuck going round. So we're up to 50 hertz now, so that's 18 RPM. Let me take it down. Right, so they're about 5 hertz. Let's see how low we can go. That's just under 3. That's 2. 1.8. Oh, and then it's just become unreliable there. It's stopped there. 1.5 hertz. I can run down to it. Look, it is still turning. 1.5 hertz. So that's the difference between these two inverters. Well, we were down in the half RPM territory there. Now, I'm not sure the motor would have any torque or usefulness at that speed, but you can see the difference between the two inverters. Sometimes you really do get what you pay for. Well, there we have it. I'm not going to say anything negative about this inverter, actually, because for what I paid for it, I think it's a good unit. And I think for most people, in most situations, it would do perfectly well. It just isn't going to quite do the job I wanted it to do with the welding rotator. Well, I hope that was useful for you. Thank you for watching Haxby Shed. Just a shot of the floods in York. With the recent storms, the river's right up. And you see that pub there, the King's Arms, it's halfway up the ground floor. But that happens. Most times it floods, to be honest. It only floods in the centre. Unfortunate if you happen to live there, but otherwise, for us, it's okay. The bad news is, I think it's going to rain. That's quite a useful sign.